Good evening. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I'm Pastor Eddie, and we are studying on life according to God's Word. We're in part number 14, and what we're doing is we're studying Psalm 119. And for those of you who have been keeping up with the study, you know that God has really shown us some great truths, some great treasures uh, that have come out of Psalm 119. And as we continue that tonight, in Psalm 60, uh, 119, verses 65 through 72 tonight, God shows us some things in here that I think is very relevant uh, to the time in which we're living in right now. If the world needs anything right now, of course, you know, we need a cure for this virus and we need some stability in, in, in all of the uh, uprising that's happening around the world. We know we need that. But what we need right now, more than anything in this world, is for God's people to begin to take the word of God to this broken world. The world will never be healed without the word of God. You can repeat that. You can spread it. You can, you can even try to disprove it, but it's the truth. The truth of the matter is that there will never be healing in our land, in this world, apart from that of the God's word and his precious son, Jesus Christ. So as we're looking at this tonight, uh, and, and I began to study on this, I began uh, to look at the things that we should tell the world. And, and in studying these verses, that's exactly what God began to bring out, that David was speaking through this psalm, but that it was written down even for this generation in which we live in, that we need these things to, listen, to be spoken into the world, that the world might begin to heal, not on our own ability, not on all the things that, that we can bring to the table, and, and this side is right or this side is right, there's only one right, there's only one truth, and that has to come from the Holy Word of God. So as we begin tonight, I want to look in verse number 65. As always, I tell you, you can find your these uh, handouts under uh, the Bible study handouts under our website, sunrise-chapel.com. Just look under Bible study notes or Bible study handouts and go down and look for part 14. You can print them out or you can just follow along right there where you are. But the first thing in verse 65, look here tonight. He says, Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according to your word. How did the Lord deal with him? He dealt with him well, but he dealt with him according to his word. If there is one thing I believe, the very first thing that he speaks of in verse 65, that we need to be telling the world it's how the Lord has dealt with us. He has dealt how well with thy servant. I want you to notice that David called himself a servant of the Lord. What does a servant do? He serves. He goes out and he, he does his very best for the one in which he serves. And if, if the world is crippled and broken right now, let, let us take an honest look at this because we're all in this equation, not just the one bringing the message, but all of us are in this equation that, listen, we have stopped being servants for the Lord. That's what is so key is we have to remain in service for God. And part of being in service for the Lord is speaking what all he's done for us, how he's dealt with us. You know, one thing we forget sometimes is that the Lord deals with us the way he does, not just with judgment and not just with discipline, but listen, with love and with compassion and with long-suffering and understanding. Don't you praise God tonight for his long-suffering and patience with you and I? But he does that simply because, listen, he has made a covenant with us through his son, Jesus Christ. He's made covenants all down through the ages of man with Adam and with Noah and with Abraham and Isaac and, and, and all through the generations. But when he made his covenant, the new covenant, through his son Jesus Christ, that brought grace into our lives. And we need to be speaking the things that God has done for us. Listen, not because we deserve them, but simply because of his love for us and his word. His word tells us 
that he will there, be there for us. His word tells us that he will never leave us or forsake us. His word, word tells us that he will always provide for us and protect us and give us power to overcome the principalities that come against us. His word tells us of the provisions he will make for us. His word tells us of the purpose that we have for our lives. His word tells us of all the position that he puts us in in order that we may accomplish his purpose through his promises. Oh, don't you see tonight, church, that we need to be speaking exactly how the Lord has treated us in our lives. When we go out and we begin to talk about Jesus, we ought to get as fired up as we do anything else when we talk about because the Lord has truly, truly done a lot for you and me. That's, that's found in verse number 65. But now I want you to watch verse 66 because I believe this is another area in which the church has kind of sit down and become complacent on. In verse 66 it says, Teach me good judgment and knowledge. Now watch this. For I have believed thy commandments. I, I underlined and, and highlighted in red the phrase, I have believed. When we go out and we begin to testify, we need to testify about what we have believed. Listen, if you are saved tonight, if you are a saved child of God, in other words, listen, there is a time in your life when you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have trusted Jesus Christ. You've asked him to become your personal Lord and Savior. You're saved. You know that Jesus Christ is your Savior and that the Holy Spirit dwells within your heart. Then there are certain foundational truths that you have believed. You believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You believe that he has lived, he lived a sinless life upon this earth. You believe that he died upon the cross of Calvary. You believe that it, he spent three days in a borrowed tomb. You believe that after the third day that he, he was not there anymore, that the tomb was empty and he had been raised by the Father. You believe that he was seen over, over a 40-day time period by over 500 people because the Bible says he was. And there was witness and evidence that that took place. You believe that he ascended back up to heaven, that he sits on the right-hand throne of God right hand of God's throne, and you believe that he is coming back for his church in that generation. There is fundamental truths that we believe. But now, let me ask you this. How much of that are we speaking into this world? How much of what we believe are we giving this broken world? We get caught up in the pandemic. We get caught up in the culture. We get caught up in all the rights and wrongs of things that are going on. But listen, we were giving a truth. We were giving the foundation of the word of God to help heal a broken land. And we need to be speaking more about what we believe. Whatever media you want to do it, whether it be verbal, one-on-one -on -one with somebody, whether it be a small group Bible study, whether it be uh, going out in different areas and passing out tracts, whether it be uh, any of the things that are relevant that pass the word of God on, whether it be through some kind of uh, social media event, use those things for good and not for evil and speak the word every chance you get. I'm here to tell you I'm passionate about this tonight because I believe this world needs God's holy word right now. So we need to be speaking what we have believed. But the third thing is, is found in verse 67. This is something we don't want to talk about very much. But it says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. You see what David, David had a, a before and after moment, okay? I want you to know this third thing tonight. The world needs to know that even though you go to church, even though you're a Christian, even though you're a born again believer, uh, a disciple of the Lord, you are not immune to sin. That you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and you never would have needed Jesus in the first place. Listen, we need to get off of this little high horse soapbox that we're on sometimes when we say, you know, we're in the church and everybody else is sinners. No, we're all sinners. This some are saved by grace. But listen, we need to begin to speak the word to the people that said, listen, I understand where you are. 
I know the Apostle Paul even said many times in his writings, listen, I know I was once like you. I was once uh, lost. I was once in sin, but now I've been saved. And David is saying the same thing. Once I found myself astray from you, but now I'm trying to keep your word. We don't need to go out and, and paint this facade as though we're, we're, we're been delivered from something or we're better off or we're better than somebody else. We need to be speaking the word at the root of, of, of it all. And that is one of the things that you can take away from the devil is the fact that, that he wants to create that division. Speak the word. We don't want to tell our children or our family members sometimes about something that happened in our past. But listen, if it's relevant to bring healing and to bring somebody to Christ, God may want you to use that. The fourth thing that I see here in Psalm 119 and verse 68 is that when we're telling people that, you know, I, I've done things in, in my past that I'm not proud of and I've done this. And listen, I, I understand because I've been there too. But now, let me tell you how good the Lord is, okay? Because this, this is what it says in verse uh, 68. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy, thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Let me tell you something. When, when, when you're talking to somebody and you say, you know what, We're, none of us are perfect. We, we all come short of the glory of God. But let me tell you how good the Lord is. That's what David said. Lord, you're good. You've dealt good with me. You do good. You are good. Let me tell you how much the Lord loves us. That even in our transgressions, the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, it's beautiful. He says, yeah, while we were yet still in our sin, Christ died for us. In other words, he brought us out. Isn't the Lord good, church? Isn't he good that he brought us out of a bad situation when you know he could have left us there? We need to be speaking that to the world. The world may look at God and they may have all of these uh, these mental pictures of who he is or what he is. And we know that there's all other kind of cults and religions and all these other things that are speaking who God is. But let me tell you something. The Bible says God is love. God is compassion. God is, is so much more than just a judge. He is a judge, but he's so much more than just a judge. And we need to be speaking those things to the world. The last thing I want to show you is, is found uh, in verse 71. Well, actually, I got two more things, but found in verse 71. It says this. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The fifth thing I want to tell you that, that we need to be speaking more of to the world is that we need to talk about the lessons we have learned even in our afflictions. You know, it's one thing to say that you can learn a lot through good times, but if the truth be spoken tonight, church, we've learned probably more from our bad situations and the negative things that are happening in our lives. Experience teaches us that. And I put down here that experience has taught David that God's word is truth. See, we can say God's word is truth all the time, and I take God at his word. But there are some times in my life, and I'm sure you've been here too, when you try the word of God. In other words, you go out and do something that, that puts that word to the test, even though you weren't meaning to, and exactly what God said would happen, happens. And so based on that experience, David is saying, listen, I know the word of God is truth, not only because the Holy Spirit tells me it's true, but because my own personal experience with God lets me know he backs up. His word. We need to be speaking that, guys, to the world in which we live in. The last thing I want to show you is found in verse 70, 72, and that's how much we should treasure God's word. Verse 72 says, The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Let me ask you this tonight. How much do you treasure God's word? How much do you treasure and value it in your daily life? I'm not talking about sit, sitting down, even if we do morning moments with Jesus, 
uh, or, or you do a personal devotion on your own and you spend those few minutes uh, with the Lord, that, that is good. It's precious, precious time with the Lord. But when you get up and start your day and go about your daily business, I'm asking you, how much of God's word affects your daily life? How much do you meditate on the verses and the things that God has shown you? How much does the Holy Spirit bring that back to your mind and to your thought process during the day? It's priceless to David. He said, listen, you could give me thousands of gold and thousands of silver, and it still would not match the priceless treasure of your word, God. Let me tell you, listen to what it says again. The law of your mouth is better for me. You see what David's saying? He said, look, I can't speak for you, but I've learned this. Not enough money or material things or people in the world could ever take the place of the value of God's holy word. And when we get to that point, when we all get to the point where we don't want to live a day without the guidance of God's word, then we're getting to a place where God can use us to help heal a broken land and heal a broken word. How's it going to come? It's going to come through the word of God. How does God want to use his holy word? He wants to use it through people like you and me. He wants to use it through the church. The church needs to get out of the building and into the streets and, and speak the word of God each and every day when we have an opportunity to. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this portion of Psalm 119. I hope you've enjoyed uh, life according to God's word as a whole right now. We're in uh, the 14th part. And prayerfully, uh, you'll take this and, and, and begin to uh, apply it to your lives. Go back and look at the notes or, or look at this again and say, God, what do I need to be speaking to the world? I pray that you be blessed and you be strong and you be safe and all of those things that we speak on Morning Moments with Jesus. But I, I particularly want to speak a blessing over your household tonight. Uh, whatever prayer requests or praise reports that you may have on your heart right now, we want to lift them up in the name of Jesus. We want to take them before the throne room of God. And we know that he hears our prayers. And when he hears, we know that he answers according to his perfect will. He's never let us down in that regard. So let's just pray right now in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight for this study. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our daily lives. And Father, right now in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus, I just ask you, Lord, if you would just move in each and every situation, each and every household, each and every family. Father, I pray a blessing over the marriages and over the children. I pray over our school system, Lord, that you would keep uh, the the whole uh, students, faculty, e anybody that goes in and out of those doors, keep them safe in the mighty and holy name of Jesus. Father, let, let us rebound as a nation and rebound as a world to not be the same and not go back to normal. Father, we need to be better than normal. We need to be better than we were before. We need to understand that we have absolutely no power in this world. And there's never a time when we have arrived that we can make it on our own. We always need you. Father, we ask that you forgive us of our sin and uh, cleanse us, Lord, of all unrighteousness and fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit to be able to go out and be the vessels we need to be in this lost and dying world. Father, we ask these things tonight in Christ's holy name. Amen. We pray a blessing over you once again, and, and thank you guys for, for tuning in. Lord's will, we'll see you back here again next Wednesday night for another portion of God's word. Uh, you just have a great night. And God bless you.